Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Pastor Neil, and I'm the new chaplain for the Peace Christian School. The devotion that I have for today is called Rejoice, He is Coming. There's a scripture that I want to read to you, and it's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The amazing thing about living in Canada, because I migrated here from the Philippines, is how diverse this nation is. And the more we can understand its diversity, the better we can reach others for Christ. There are people here from all over the world. That is a blessing, but it can also be a challenge, especially when we are trying to keep the nation together. In, today, in today's society, is characterized by division, segregation, and disunity. These divisions are the cause for lack of peace in the hearts of people. But how can we maintain peace and joy in a world full of hatred, war, and instability? You see, in chapter 4 of the letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul presents a series of exhortations to the church in Philippi. And in this chapter, we find five counsels or lessons to the Philippians. The first lesson that we can learn is that we need to stand firm. We need to persevere. That's found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. And it reads, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. What does it mean to stand firm? What is Paul trying to tell these people and why is he telling them to stand firm? You see, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27, gives them the same exhortation to stand firm, to persevere. You know, the time have come in which that what we can be shaken will be shaken. The devil is ready to shake people out of the church. And Jesus warns Peter, the devil has asked you to shake you, but I pray for you. One of the amazing things about not being shaken and standing firm is this amazing fish that I discovered, not that I discovered, but I learned about on the National Geographic. It's called the Remoria fish. And this Remoria fish has a symbiotic relationship with whales and sharks. It clings to them, a suction cup on their head. And wherever these whales and sharks go, it is hitching a ride. And no matter the speed or the depth, the remore stands firm and stays placed. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may shift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. I've been in church for over 30 years. And I have seen a lot of people, beautiful people, coming and going on their wonderful journey with Jesus. But sadly, I've also seen many fall by the wayside. And it never ceases to amaze me how people leave the church for the most trivial things. For example, I came to church and nobody said hello to me. Therefore, I don't belong there. Well, there's a story of a young girl who was brought up in the church, had all the advantages of a Christian home, loving father and mother, but she wanted to experiment the world. She wanted to have more freedom than what her parents were giving her, and so she came to New York City. She tried to board the subway train, but somebody pushed her into an oncoming train, and she fell in the tracks, and she was dragged. She, she, she was helped out by the, uh, by the emergency personnel and was taken to the hospital. But it was a miracle that she survived. Although both legs were amputated, as she was sitting on the hospital bed, she reflected and realized how blessed she was to have a family, to have a home, despite that she did not have her legs no longer. But it was because of her Christian faith that she still prevailed and remained strong. 
It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You know, some people are worried that when Jesus comes, there's going to be a judgment. And are they going to make it through the judgment? But I tell you right now, if you have Jesus in your life, you don't need to worry. Because salvation is the hope in the second coming of Jesus who gives us peace. The second lesson we can learn in Philippians chapter 4 is unity. We need to agree with one another. It reads, I plead with Yodia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. I implore Yodia and I implore Syntyche to be the same in mind in the Lord. You see, these were two women in the Bible in the New Testament that were having a big disagreement. And yet there was a problem among them. And we don't know exactly what was the problem between Eudea and Syntyche. I don't know the nature of it, but it was serious enough to drive these two dear ladies apart. They were divided at odds with one another. And Paul said to them, Dear sisters, you must be reconciled. Uh, set aside your difference in the Lord. Did you know that the name Eudea means prosperous journey and Syntyche means pleasant acquaintance or good luck? And so I imagine that one day Syntyche said to Eudea, have a prosperous journey. And of course, Eudea answered back saying, good luck. They were dedicated Christians as they were committed to work of the gospel, preaching with the Apostle Paul. He tells them, Please, Eudea Syntyche, can you make up and work together? There's a story that I heard a few years ago about a special Olympics in Seattle. There were nine contestants, all physically, physically or mentally disabled. They assembled on the 100-yard dash line at the gun. They all started out. Not exactly in a dash, but with a relish to run the race, to finish and win. All that is except one little boy who stumbled on the asphalt, tumbled over a couple times, and began to cry. The other eight heard the boy cry. They slowed down. They looked back. Then they all turned around and went back, every one of them. One girl with Down syndrome bent down and kissed him and said, this will make it better. Then all the other nine linked their arms and walked together to the finish line. Everyone in the stadium stood up and cheered for several minutes. People who were there still tell that story. But why? Because deep down, we know one thing. What matters in this life is more than winning for ourselves. What matters in this life is helping others win even if it means slowing down and changing our course. I heard of another illustration at an evangelistic meeting, and a, there were young people serving dinner for mothers, being that it was Mother's Day. A four-year-old girl pushed a two-year-old boy, and he fell on the floor and started crying. The pastor picked him up and tried to make him feel better, but he kept crying. So he called the little girl and said, Do you have something to say to him? Something like, I'm sorry. Then she said, sorry, and gave him a kiss on the cheeks. And she asked, would you forgive me? Mm-hmm. The boy jumped out of his lap and started playing with this little girl again, as if nothing happened. No wonder Jesus says, if you don't become like children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. The third lesson we can learn is rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4 verse 4 reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This is the third exhortation of the Apostle Paul. He tells us to rejoice in the Lord. Have fun in the Lord. I believe that we should be the happiest people on earth, don't you think? I mean, we have everything. We have Jesus. We have the hope that very few people have. Paul is saying here, enjoy what you do in the Lord. The church should not be a boring church, not even if it's located in a small town. The devil will try to take your smile off your face, but don't let him. A little girl was walking to school in the middle of a thunderstorm. 
stopping, looking up, smiling. The mother asked, what are you doing? I'm trying to look pretty for God. He's taking my picture. You see, as we face the storms of life, let us not forget to smile. Because the hope in the second coming of Jesus gives us peace. The fourth lesson is we need to be gentle in the Lord. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Philippians 4 verse 5. What does it mean to be gentle? Was Jesus gentle? Was he a gentleman? Well, sure he was. To be gentle in the Greek means to yield. What happens when two vehicles approach in the intersection and none of them want to yield? Well, a collision, a crash. What happens when two opinionated persons argue and none want to yield? Well, there's a collision. Paul said, this cannot be brothers and sisters. We need to learn to yield, be gentle with one another. A little girl was praying, God, please help the bad people to be good and the good people to be nice. The fifth and final lesson is pray in the Lord. Philippians 4 verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Don't be anxious for anything. Anxiety and prayer are opposites. God wants us to present our problems and cares to Him in prayer and thanksgiving. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I like the version of the message. It puts it this way. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let the petition and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. That's from the Message Bible. So, as I come to a conclusion, let us review. First of all, how can we get homeward bound and how can we rejoice for He is coming? Number one, Stand firm. Number two, have unity. Number three, rejoice in the Lord. Number four, be gentle in the Lord. And number five, pray in the Lord. Why are we to persevere, to seek unity, to rejoice in the Lord, to be gentle with one another, and to pray? The answer is found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able to subdue all things. And remember, our citizenship is in heaven. God bless and take care.